Hey guys, so a few months back I shared with you the story of adventurous geologists who had trekked far into the cold wilderness of Russia in an effort to catalog the largest megalithic site on Earth. So remote, they are steeped in legends of snow yetis and mysterious monsters devouring all who dare to venture into these remote areas. When I shared the amazing images of these stone structures, many argued that they were natural formations. Maybe because they struggled to conceive such enormous ancient ruins in such remote places. Discoveries that seem to be many hundreds of thousands of years old. Maybe even as old as the giant sphinx. More and more is being learnt about them. With ever more daring explorations of the ruins being undertaken, a team discovered a vault in one of the stone megaliths. An access vault that led them into an artificially made stone cavern system. These underground structures are truly massive and are undoubtedly constructed by an intelligent builder. Hidden for many millennia, these caverns are not only massive but constructed using blocks placed upon one another that are over 50 feet in length in some instances, making these stones many thousands of tons in weight, seemingly placed effortlessly into the shape of underground walls. This discovery has not really shed light upon how the ancients built such structures but rather push their apparent capabilities farther from our understanding. Not only are these structures purpose of vast mystery, but they also contain place stones bigger than any we've ever discovered, even eclipsing the unfinished stone found at the ancient Chinese quarry known as Yangshan. A stone can be found here half cut away from the bedrock, in excess of 16,000 tons, thought by scholars throughout time to have been left at the quarry due to them not being able to move it. Yet, here we have stones placed into a cave system designed which even outweigh Yangshan. This not only proves they could move them, but lift them and work them. Just how many quote natural formations are really just extremely weathered, once extremely large stone built structures? Maybe there are many stone granite hills and even maybe mountains that dot our earth, which were before millennia of rain, grand structures of a forgotten people. The underground cities of Cappadocia, Turkey, number more than 200 and are spread across the entire region. It is highly possible that there is many more lying below the surface, just waiting to be found. Of all the underground cities discovered so far, the most awe-inspiring is perhaps the Derinkuyu city. It was discovered by accident in 1963. When a local family was renovating a house, a wall gave way to reveal a passage that led to this underground network. According to National Geographic, it is 11 levels deep, descending more than 280 feet to the bedrock, covering an area of over 4 miles squared. It includes temples, tombs, shops, living quarters, and even livestock pens. Over 15,000 air shafts were built into its design and would have been enough room to comfortably house approximately 20,000 people. The underground city has extending passages that connected to other neighboring and underground water well systems, providing fresh water. What is especially interesting regarding this underground world is the evidence to suggest that they were hiding from something terrifying. A sophisticated security system consisting of a particular build design accompanied by numerous gigantic rolling stone blocking doors that would seal the city from the inside. Moreover, its multi-layered design meant that each level could be sealed off from the next level using this same system. Just what were these people hiding from? Whatever it was, they obviously preferred to run rather than confront it. The structure was excruciatingly carved into the underground rock and is as strong today as the day it was built, safely accommodating guests such as archaeologists and tourists. Whoever built the network obviously had an advanced knowledge of stoneworking, architecture, engineering, and the local geography. Aging the structure has proven very difficult. There are no existing quarries, waste piles, or tools to examine. Furthermore, there are no records documenting its construction, or people who may have lived there. Also, unfortunately, many cultures have used the underground towns over the centuries. According to UNESCO, it is believed that the first signs of monastic activity in Cappadocia date back to the 4th century, at which time acting on the instructions of Basil the Great in order to resist attacks from the Arabs, the people should band together into small, local communities and begin inhabiting cells dug into the rock. Therefore, modern academia tends to conclude that they were likely built by the Phrygian people around 800 BC. 
yet it is also a strong possibility that they are far older than this. By the bishop's instruction, they are to inhabit, not build. Therefore, it's safe to assume he was aware of their existence, rather than the person who thought them up. Some believe the underground caves were constructed by the very ancient Persian king Yima. Yima, attributed as mythological by many, is said to have had a lifespan of more than 900 years, a common feature of biblical figures as well. The Zoroastrian text Vendidad states that Yima built an underground city on the orders of the god Ahura Mazda to protect his people from a catastrophic winter. Much like the account of Noah in the Bible, Yima was instructed to collect pairs of the best animals and people as well as the best seeds in order to reseed the earth after the winter cataclysm. This was before the last ice age, 110,000 years ago. There have recently been some astonishing academically contradictory discoveries unearthed throughout Europe. Archaeologists have been discovering a network of underground tunnels, apparently somehow cut throughout the Stone Age, which cover the territories of Spain, Turkey, and most of the European continent. Their approximate age, according to funded archaeologists, is no less than 12,000 years. Yet how people living within the Stone Age, people without any form of metal tools or chisels, managed to cut thousands of miles of tunnel systems is clearly a considerably contradictory mystery. Thousands of underground tunnels stretching from Scotland to Turkey that have, predictably, placed the many submissive, order-taking funded scientists throughout the academic world at a dead end to explain. However, if one presumes, as the evidence we share here on our channel often suggests, that a past, now lost, highly advanced civilization once flourished here on our Earth, their creation is less of a challenge to explain. Yet the purpose for their existence will remain an enigma. Were they created by a group attempting to hide from something? Or possibly, they were ancient smuggling tunnels left by members of this lost civilization once used to smuggle items from ancient settlement to settlement found throughout Europe. German archaeologist Dr. Heinrich Kusch in his book Secrets of the Underground Doors to the Ancient World, states that the tunnels were dug beneath hundreds of Neolithic settlements all across Europe, and the fact that so many tunnels have survived indicates that the original network was much larger than that which still survives. Quote, In Bavaria alone, we discovered 700 meters of these underground tunnels. In the Austrian Styria, we found 350. And throughout Europe, there were thousands of such tunnels, from the north of Scotland stretching to the Mediterranean itself." End quote. The fact that these tunnels have been identified as having been cut at least 12,000 years ago should indicate to all those still with the capacity of critical thought that they are undoubtedly far older than this, as to state that they were somehow cut by people with literally no tools to their disposal, to us seems laughable. The tunnels are all relatively narrow, being about 70 centimeters in width, just enough for an adult man to travel through. In some places, there are small rooms, storage chambers and seats, clearly indicating that these cave systems were used by a number of people at a time. How did our ancient ancestors create such an awe-inspiring network of tunnels without the utilization of some form of tunneling equipment, lighting, and indeed smelted metal tools. It is not surprising to us or anyone who has paid attention to the limited tale of events put forward by academia that these tunnels remain a perplexing ancient artifact for them to explain. Yet we feel they are clear evidence of a past civilization, having crudely cut these tunnels possibly for some nefarious reason we are yet to unravel. They are undoubtedly highly compelling. Something which has always puzzled us at Mystery History, although the mountains of pyramids, the gigantic megaliths, indestructible artifacts, or the out-of-place artifacts, is the massive amount of underground cities found all over our planet. Extraordinary undertakings, seemingly necessary at some time in the very distant past, complex tunnel networks almost telepathically hewn direct to each other cut from hard bedrocks, with many exhibiting considerable efforts committed into security. 
Huge rolling doors can be found at many crucial junctions within the underground systems, as can be found, for example, amongst the underground cities of Cappadocia. Derinkuya, in particular, still exhibits its rolling doors still in situ. No one displaying the builder's impressive capabilities, but also the abilities of the rolling stone operators, as whoever built these contraptions unarguably still possessed megalithic stone-moving knowledge. Knowledge we hypothesize is lost knowledge, due to the builders of said sites also a lost civilization, which instead of where they have been placed chronologically by funded investigations, actually, we believe, originate an unimaginably longer time ago, placed far within an antiquity not only lost, but actively dismissed. But regardless of the impressive feats these underground cities were to create, the question persists, why? Why go to so much effort? The cities of Uskanakt, Derinkuyu, and Kemakli, all found just within Cappadocia, Turkey, are not only some of the most complete underground dwellings, with Derinkuyu estimated to have once been capable of housing 20,000 people. Derinkuyu even connects to Kemakli via an underground tunnel an astonishing 8 kilometers long. And this is but a tiny fraction of the ancient underground cities, which have so far been found all over the world with more discovered each day. Many seem to have simply been sealed when no longer needed, thus many still lay undisturbed to this day. Derinkuyu, for example, was only rediscovered when a wall was knocked down in a house during renovation work all seemingly constructed around the same time, yet any definitive motivations for why ancient man decided upon such drastic efforts worldwide have yet to be substantiated. Their construction remains a complete mystery, a fact we find highly intriguing. Many people will argue that these cities were chiseled by slaves over many years and at great suffering, a safe bet narrative which jives with the mainstream. When it comes to the academically claimed ages, and due to the people during said ages substantially lacked any advanced stone-cutting technologies imperative for creating such vast works. This argument, however, thanks to the volumes of examples of exquisite, astounding feats discovered as a special few of these underground complexes, not only installed clearly to demonstrate an acoustic level of awareness on par with prodigal ability and possibly many other as yet undeciphered features displaying excelled understanding of many of life's most intriguing subjects. The Hypogeum, located within modern-day Malta, is but one of many examples which can be presented as proof that whoever built these underground layers at minimum possessed astonishing acoustic knowledge, far ahead of man, as well as almost physics-defying stone-moving techniques displayed in the structure itself. The hypogeum possesses a characteristic designed into its construction, which is simply astonishing. It is so mystifying that although very little is known regarding how it was achieved, a certain frequency it can amplify which seems to stimulate the building's amplifying capabilities, as if the entire structure resonates and has since been shown to also affect the human brain becoming known as the God Frequency. Who built these underground labyrinths? Why? When did they build them? We find these incredible relics of a lost civilization highly compelling. We have often explored the many curious tales of a particular ancient global catastrophe. The Great Flood, a global deluge featured in countless ancient accounts. Yet additionally, we have also recently explored the compelling evidential corroboration to these ancient claims, supportive geological and scientific evidence, which intriguingly support there indeed once being such a flood, one of biblical proportions. The geological data supporting the change in sea levels are deserts once seabeds submerged pyramids, ruins, and not to mention the tales of Atlantis. However, one area which is rarely, if ever mentioned in these same libraries of history, are the underground cities once built. All of them found on nearly every continent, 
were each buried beneath the earth in such a way as to avoid the land itself. The largest of these, Derinkuyu, discovered by complete accident during a house renovation. It strongly suggests that many more may still be laying undiscovered, waiting to see light again, resting undisturbed in complete darkness for unknown millennia. Thousands of connected tunnels have already been found and explored all over Europe, thousands of miles of interlinking underground tunneling systems, all built as if those who created them found ground level either inhospitable or of a mortally perilous place to dwell, this for some unknown reason. Derinkuyu, as mentioned, a site we have explored in depth before, not only has curious multi-ton rolling door stoppers located at strategic locations, stones modern man is incapable of moving, but was also reportedly lit by a natural gas pocket they tapped, tunneled a pipe through the complex with holes positioned along which, set alight as if a London Victorian street, ingenious if true regardless of the genius that went into Derinkuyu itself. Alien corpses found within remains of the Hypogeum in Malta, it must be noted along with 7,000 other headless corpses, yet these complete bodies lay there alongside them. The oracle room within, just like the rumors of the natural light technology of Derinkuyu, also possessed, yet still possesses, its own extraordinary example of ancient high technology. With an altar stone in the oracle room placed in such a location, complemented by extraordinarily perfect architectural design, amplifies one's voice incredibly well and throughout the structure. Thousands of kilometers of groundwater flooded caveways have recently been found in Belize, Honduras, El Salvador, along with many other locations. Littered ancient ruins, remains, and inhabitations, once this flooding is dated, we believe it will push the currently held chronology of man, and indeed these groups age, back massively, a subject we will cover soon. However, these digressions merely scratch the surface of what we intend to explore further and indeed share with all of you. So any support in this quest is greatly appreciated. To help us out, check the description for links. Why did ancient man seemingly hide underground? Why did they make such gargantuan efforts to dig, design, and then seemingly live in these places long term? These are questions we find highly compelling.